This is a piece of gold, while this is a piece of fool's gold, which is also known as pyrite. These two minerals have differing coloration, which is fairly easy to tell apart, and thus are well known by many miners, including those who lived during the late 1800s Western Australia gold rush. Thus, when miners and geologists of the era spotted this mineral amongst ore, they threw it away in the tailings pile as to them it was clearly fool's gold. And that seemed like a reasonable conclusion at first. Since the tailings pile had rock which no one wanted to smelt, it was used by local engineers to build several stone walkways and buildings in the city of Kalgoorlie. Then, several years after this process had occurred, the mine owners realized that they made a terrible and costly mistake. Despite their brassy color typical of pyrite, these pieces were not fool's gold, as instead this discarded material was rich in a rare telluride mineral known as calaverite. Despite not having the distinguishing color of gold, as shown by its chemical formula of two atoms of tellurium and one atom of gold, it was 43.5% by weight gold. In other words, much of the city of Calgary was accidentally built with gold. In terms of a modern price conversion, each gram of the discarded calaverite quote-unquote junk material had 2760 US dollars worth of gold in it. As a result, over the next decade, large swaths of the previously emplaced junk rock was ripped out of walkways and smelted to unlock its molten gold. To add to all of this, it was thereafter discovered that this mineral contained not only precious gold but also silver, as more than a percent of its weight was native silver. And this is how a city in Australia was once accidentally paved in both gold and silver. If you are a future miner or geologist, although you should be on the lookout for this mineral and similar tellurite minerals, there is some good news. Tellurium is one of the rarest elements in the Earth's crust, being more than 10 times less common than silver is. In my work as a geologist, I have never encountered a tellurium mineral, at least specifically during field work. With that being said, suppose that you did live or work in an area with known tellurium deposits. In that case, you would want to keep an eye out for anything metallic, as all of the relevant and more common gold or silver-rich telluride minerals or metallic, aka, have a metal-like luster. And all of the relevant minerals can also be scratched with a copper coin, as they have a Mohs hardness of less than 3. Whereas valuable telluride minerals such as muthmanite, costavite, and sylvanite could all be scratched with a copper coin, more common metallic fool's gold minerals such as pyrite and chalcopyrite cannot. The more silver-rich tellurium minerals tend to be metallic silvery gray color, while gold-rich variants tend to have a metallic yellow coloration. With this being said, telluride minerals seem to occur in areas of the world which have or once had alkali-rich magmas, so for example phonolite and trachyte or their intrusive equivalents, often occur in areas which have some form of more than 1 billion year old basement rock, and often occur in parts of the world where the crust is unusually thick compared to the surrounding landscape. As a final note, I must state that if you are ever in the city of Kalgoorlie or a nearby location which has a piece of this gold and silver ore still remaining in place in a walkway, road, or in a building, please do not remove it. It is not only illegal to remove it, but it is also best for the gold and silver ore material to remain as a unique part of the region's history. Thanks for watching. If you would like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, I would like to thank this channel's patrons on Patreon and channel members on YouTube.